Patrick Lake. And I'm Weston Benshaw. Welcome back to ABC News 6. Framers created the National Judiciary and it gave Congress the power to create federal court systems and lower federal court systems as well. There are national courts and there are state courts and they can work together and to create the dual court system. To get to the Supreme Court, the case has to start from a lower court and then get appealed to a higher court. Inferior courts, such as con constitutional court, which handle broad cases, and special courts that handle very specific issues. Then, to the final court, the Supreme Court, if it gets handled again. The thesis of this new show is going to cover gay marriage. Gautier Kelly is against it because he says it's not ethically moral, but Gabe says it's for it because regardless of the sex, people should have the, the right to marriage. Got it. Back to Patrick for coverage on current events. Thanks, Weston. I'm going to discuss the National Judiciary and accordingly Supreme Court cases of 2014. The Judiciary of the United States is responsible for interpreting and enforcing laws. On January 17, 2014, the Supreme Court heard an abortion zone case and declined a 20-week ban. Earlier this year, the Supreme Court struck down a version of the Defense of Marriage Act. Gay rights supported celebrating. The Prop 8 plaintiff of Paul Katumi proposes to Jeff Zara live on TV that same-sex couples should be allowed rights. And Obama decided on Friday, January 14, or Tuesday, January 14, 2014, that the remaking of the federal judiciary was necessary. Back to you, Weston. Our next segment is going to be Chase talking about the judicial branch and powers and how it's changed over time. Chase? I'm Chase. I'm here to talk today about the judicial branch, its powers and jurisdiction, and how it's changed over time. So first off, the types of jurisdiction that the federal courts have is exclusive jurisdiction, cases that can only be tried in federal courts. Next is concurrent jurisdiction, cases that can be heard by both state and federal courts. Original jurisdiction, a court in which a case is first heard, has original jurisdiction. And appellate jurisdiction, a court that hears a case on appeal from a lower court, has appeal of jurisdiction. Now, how the federal court has changed over time is they've created 12 circuits, 89 judicial districts, with two judges per district. Now, the some district court jurisdiction that they have are criminal, is a case which a person has created a crime that they can be tried for, or a civil case that involves no criminals, I guess you can say. Now, also, they've changed the court in a court of appeals created by Congress in 19, 1891 to affiliate the burden or Supreme Court. Third, basically, 13 court appeals. Each court has 6 to 28 judges, and it just keeps changing over time, and they only had, have only appellate jur jurisdiction at that time. So basically, over time, they've changed it and added the jurisdictions through and the judicial branch has only been able to use mainly all their express powers from the given by the Constitution and very limited implied powers because people have been very decisive on whether the federal courts should be able to use more implied powers. So some other things that the courts do is they establish a special court by Congress and they have very narrow jurisdiction. Judges serve for a like five, five year term with a courts martial and very limited things. So basically that describes the judicial 
courts and the federal courts and how it's changed over time and the jur jurisdictions and the powers that it has. Thank you. All right, so the Supreme Court abortion zone case, and what it means is, is there's a 20 weeks of pregnancy, there's a 20 week window in which you can get an abortion. And what the Supreme Court is proposing is that there's supposed to be a 20 week ban, which so they're gonna propose that there's no abortion. So Gabe, what was your view on this? Um, well, I feel that they shouldn't ban abortion because or I feel that they should actually because I feel that every kid has a right to be born and I mean if you don't want to have a kid then you should take the precaution of having protective sex and it's your fault if you have a kid when you didn't want to so I don't think that you should just because you made a mistake I don't think you should have to take it out or like take your child's life on it so I feel like every child should be born. That's a great point. What's your view? Um, I think that people should be allowed to like get an abortion. I mean, let's say you're, you know, raped and uh, that you end up having That's a child. Point. Well, I mean, I doubt, you know, I highly doubt you want to keep it. Um, and, I, and I don't know how like, you know, crazy that sounds, but I think that a person should be allowed to decide whether or not to keep an unborn child as long as it's like, you know, in the first 20 weeks of the pregnancy. Um, yeah. Yeah, but if you get raped, then you should just be able to like put it up for adoption or something like. Don't mm -hmm. necessarily have to kill it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but that, I mean that that's kind of like. That's but it takes it that's takes time to do that. I mean, some people like don't want to take that time. It doesn't just take time. time. I mean, a child has like. the, a child has a right to live with her mom and dad. I mean, you know, giving out your child for abortion is you know, just as bad as abandoning your pet on the side of the road. So you're saying it's like morally wrong that the child. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I, you know, I think it's, I think it's more like more the right to you know, kill effectively kill a child. Well, it's not you know conscious, it's living yet. Mm -hmm. uh, then you know, abandoning it and let it live a miserable life, not knowing her parents or his parents, while it's living. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the whole point of putting it up for adoption is to have make it have a better life. And I highly doubt like any kid that's been adopted, or maybe like a slim amount, have had a worse life than they would if they were with their parents that were originally going to put up for abortion. Mm, yeah, I mean, it's like you know, the child or like children who are uh, like adopted, do like parents want to have a child, but sometimes the child does not like fit their you know criteria as of a good child and then they end up just being you know beaten and stuff like that but what if the family didn't have enough money and they accidentally had unprotected sex and they found out that she was going to have a baby what what would you do Gabe? um you couldn't afford the baby the baby if you gave birth to the baby the baby would live a terrible not terrible but it would grow in poverty i would probably yeah. try and get enough money and say or like try and get a job any way I could or do anything that I could to make some money and then eventually save up money or maybe put it up for adoption or something or get enough money to like just like support it or something. Gabe, what I mean, go what's your view? Um well I think that, you know, first thing first, it's a very unrealistic scenario because you can basically get free condoms uh, in any like hospital, something like that. Yeah. Uh, but even if that does happen, or if somebody's just too careless or too drunk to think about putting a condom on, uh, I think that he should be allowed to abort, like, you know, effectively kill his baby uh, if he doesn't want to take care of it. All right. All right, these were both great points. Now, this, this case was heard on January 17th of 2014 and will be decided in June. Right. Now, our next key topic is the Defense of Marriage Act. And pretty much what the Defense of Marriage Act is, is it pretty much explains that a marriage is a marriage. You should be able to marry who you want with who you want. Now, Gabe, what's your view on this? Um, uh, I feel that um, one controversy concerning the national judiciary, the Supreme Court, and Supreme Court justice is on the topic of judicial activism. And I feel that uh, judicial activism is defined as a philosophy on judicial decision making, it says judges should follow the letter of law and apply precedent. And um, a big court case that is currently going on in the Supreme Court is on gay marriage. And um, the reason that I am for gay marriage is because I feel that no matter what sexual preference you are, you should be able to marry whoever you want and you should be able to be happy 
with that person and spend your life with that person. Um, you regardless be, of sex. Yeah. You should be able to get married in any state, in all 50 states. Um, should pass the law because it shouldn't matter if you're marrying another person of the sex or if you're marrying someone of the same sex. If you're happy, then bottom line, you should be able to marry them and um, just spend your life with that person because you shouldn't be taking away somebody's rights to to how they feel. You can't change how they feel. So I don't think they're like, like kind of like um, just putting it off and like saying like what was intended to be, which is that- In the Constitution. Yeah, which is that opposite sex can only be married is the, is what marriage is actually on. I think that they should change it so that like, no matter what you are, who you are, you should be able to get married regardless of how you feel. I like that. So you're saying that the government shouldn't come in contact or come like in our lives and say what we can and can't do? Yeah. All right, good. What's your view? Uh, I have to disagree because first and first, gay marriage is not marriage. It's called, like calling something marriage does not make it a marriage. Marriage is always, you know, it's always like a covenant between a man and a woman which by its nature are ordered toward like, the procreation, education of children, and the unity of, like, of, and well-being of the spouses. And then it denies a child to, you know, either to the mother or to the father. Uh, and, I mean, it's a child's best interest that he be raised under the influence of his natural, like, of a natural father and a mother. And this rule is confirmed by the evident difficulties faced by the many children who are orphans or raised by a single parent, uh, a relative, or a foster parent. Um, and then my last point is that, you know, just in general, it offends God, and, you know, it's, this is my most important reason. Whenever one violates the natural moral order established by God, one sins uh, and offends God. Same-sex marriage uh, does justice accordingly. Anyone who professes to love God must be opposed to it. I like that. It's like a that. fantastic point. All right. So you're saying if... Um, the child is born and it just has two dads or two moms. You're saying it wouldn't have, it wouldn't be fair to the child. It wouldn't have like the same life of um, of a dad and mom. Well, yeah, it, it basically just start off the life with like a a, um, a handicap because I mean we both know that you know bullies love to pick on uh, children with a uh, mm -hmm. you know two two mothers or two fathers and just in general get only you know a fatherly point of view on life or a motherly point of view on life and then that you know interfere with his education so but if like someone is gay and they are gay but wouldn't the whole gay rights is to like express that i guess or like they don't really care who bullies them in a way gay what's your stance um yeah like, shouldn't you live that i guess i mean it's yeah not, you should like i don't know I, I understand why some people would disagree with that because of what you said goat but I don't know, I think some people may have different opinions as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should be able to, like, stand up for who you are, and, like, no matter what people say, you should be able to, like, if you feel a certain way, then you should be able to express that way and stick with it, and don't change, like, who you are, like, what you are, just because of what people say about you. So, if people, like, and plus if people say that about you, then they're not, like, you should, then they're not really, like, worth listening to or, like, helping, so you should be able to, like, Marry whoever you want, so. All right. Um, how do you think the court will decide on this decision? Uh, I, think, I think it'd go either way. Really, what I'm for, I'm for gay marriage. I think you should be able to marry whoever you want. It really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's marriage. It's a union. I think it kind of, the opinions come from the background of your family. Um, I don't know, but... Religion from, has something to talk yeah, about. Yeah, religion also has a big impact on this decision. But it kind of also depends on um, how you're living and what life you're in as well. Same with uh, abortion, because if you're in, if you're... Uh, below the poverty line, you would want to abort that baby because if you had that baby, then the baby, even though you may love the baby, the baby needs a certain amount of money to keep, to sub sustain it. I mean, plus you've got college and you've got other expenses, yeah. insurance, yeah. medical bills. Very true, very true. Um, Thank you for watching ABC News Show at 6. See you next time.